Well, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and I've asked the Lord this morning to help me to uh, read the scriptures that He would have us to read, and, and uh, if, I have, if I can say anything, well, I can take it and bless it. Uh, and if I say anything that is not according to God's Word, well, I ask forgiveness. Uh, we'll be studying this morning out of the book of Matthew in the 12th chapter. Verse 31, we want to talk to you a little bit, read some scripture this morning concerning the Holy Ghost, and uh, it is it is what he is called, one of the things that he's called, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, but uh, <coughs> so many people uh, this day and time is afraid to say Holy Ghost, right. and uh, we, we've heard Brother Larry speak on this also. Uh, but we should be bold about uh, calling on the name of the Holy Ghost as we are bold in talking to people in crowds or, or whatever about the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be bold about it because uh, He's the one that has uh, supplied our brain. Mm -hmm. He is the one that's trained our brain. He's the one that speaks to our hearts. And uh, so we shouldn't be ashamed of Him. We shouldn't be ashamed that uh, of the word ghost because it, it means it's, it's, it's there for a reason. But anyway, in the, in the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 31, it says, Wherefore I say unto you, <clears throat> all manner of sin and blaspheming shall be forgiven unto men. But the blaspheming against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Right. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Amen. So we want to see here this morning what uh, we can try to understand through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. But he's saying this morning that there is a special thing about the Holy Ghost in that you don't blaspheme. Right. Now you you can blaspheme, and then this word blaspheme, I wrote this a little bit uh, uh, down about it, but it says, speaking against the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, profane or mocking and this profane is to treat as not sacred mm -hmm. and so when we blaspheme or when people blaspheme the Holy Spirit they are using that as saying that he is not sacred that he is not really really true uh, a lot of people say well how many times have you seen him uh, and things of this nature. And listen, people, this thing is a stink in the nostrils. Amen. Because when people uh, use these things and, and, and snigger about them and laugh about them and all this, uh, it's against it's against them. And and the Lord will not the Lord will not let them get by with it. And so, uh, you know, we have this this uh, denomination that calls themselves. Uh, that that they uh, they use the Holy Ghost and and they're not ashamed of using the Holy Ghost the word Holy Ghost, but the thing of it is the way that they carry out things sometimes uh, causes other people to say things about them and laugh at them and mock them and make fun of them. Well, listen, it's the best not to do that mm -hmm. because the thing of it is if they're wrong about the way they, whatever they do, I've never seen a whole lot from them, but whatever they do, uh, God will take care of that. Mm -hmm. But remember this, when you open your mouth and put her in gear and let something come out, listen, you're gonna to have to give an account for it. Right. And that's not only in speaking about the Holy Ghost, that's speaking about a, a brother or a sister or a church or whatever. And so the best thing to do is when you come to this in the road, just go by it mm -hmm. and just bypass it and let it sit there because God will take care of it. So we see here, he says, 
in verse 31, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Now why, why and how does this happen? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, what I feel like it is, and I believe the Holy Spirit has, has, has helped me to see this. But listen, the Holy Spirit is of God. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is the one that comes to your heart's door. And He's the one, or it's the one that knocks. It's the one that brings the word. It's the one that warns you. It's the one that, that speaks to your heart and says, Hey, in your condition, you're going to die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. That's the, that is the, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus over here, and we'll see it in a minute. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. And he sent the Holy Spirit for those that were saved as a comforter. Mm -hmm. But he also sent the Holy Spirit to talk to those sinners that hear God's word. And I, 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 I'm going to stop right here a minute and say, I hope this morning as we are going out into the world at, with this lesson, that if there's any out there that they would pay close attention to this because if that Holy Spirit does not come and knock on your heart's door, you can forget it. You can forget it because the thing of this, you cannot be saved unless the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, comes and knocks on your heart's door right. and brings you under conviction. That's it. And so when we see here that he's talking about all manner of sin will be forgiven man uh, that speak against Jesus and against God. But this blaspheming against the Holy Ghost and, and this blaspheming, like I said a while ago, is speaking against the Holy Spirit and mocking it and, and saying all manner of fun. And somebody might come to you and say, well, uh, has the Holy Spirit spoken to your heart? And you start laughing and, and pointing your finger at him and calling him this and saying that and telling him what you think about the Holy Spirit. Listen, that's mocking. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says here in this, in verse 32, And whosoever speaketh against word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. And listen, there's people that are going up and down the world today that is cursing, calling God's name in vain, calling Jesus' name in vain, and things like this. And he says, that will be forgiven. That will be forgiven. But listen, if that, if that Holy Spirit is offended at you, and he comes to your heart's door and knocks on your and, 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 and warns you, and, and you offend it, listen, it won't be forgiven. Right. Now, there's something that's going to have to take place in your, in your uh, sinful life, in your spirit, to warn you against what is to happen. Now, I can get up here, and I can teach, and I can try to teach, and I can try to teach. But Larry can get up here and preach, and he can preach, and he can preach, and you go out to the side, hey, you don't feel no different. Right. And listen, bless God when that Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. When you're uh, somewhere, maybe in a crowd of 10,000, and the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, you take notice. You take heed. And don't, don't, be, don't be wondering about, well, I guess that's of the devil. Listen, you accept that as the Holy Spirit, and if it's not the Holy Spirit, listen, He will lead you, and He will guide you in the right way. But I, And I know the devil has his way of getting into the flesh and speaking to the flesh, and sometimes, you know, we wonder, well, was that of the devil or was that of God? Well, you just wait on the Lord, as what the Bible says. You wait on the Lord, and He'll take care of this situation. But please, this morning, what God's Word says is, don't don't blaspheme. Don't doubt. Don't mock the Holy right. Spirit. Because, listen, it's the same thing as you mind your jumping off the edge of, of, of hell into it. Because, listen, he says here, now again, he says here, <clears throat> And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man shall be forgiven. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. And so when you get in this condition that you're mocking the Holy Spirit, listen, it takes 
And the Holy Spirit has got to come back mm -hmm. and speak to your heart again. And listen, the, the Holy Spirit may be uh, a, a meeker spirit than, uh, uh, than you think he is. And it, it may take a while. And, and I, listen, I'm not saying that he won't turn back. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that close. But I'm telling you this. He, if he speaks to your heart, don't turn him away. Don't. Amen. If nothing else, you just drop your head and say, forgive me, Lord. Because, listen, that's the dangerous thing in this world. That's, that's the danger. That's it. And God had this wrote and, and Jesus spoke it. And it's true. And so notice here again, he says, either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for the tree is known by its fruit. Amen. Now, over in the, the seventh chapter of Matthew, we see here in seven in verse seven, seven, 17, what it says about that. Uh, it says, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Amen. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the far, for, for by their fruits <coughs> you shall know them. And so listen, if, if you're a rejecter of the Holy Spirit, if you're a mocker, if you're a criticizer, if you laugh and make fun of it, listen, this is, this is the same thing as putting you in, in the category of a bad tree. Mm -hmm. And it's hewed down. And listen, uh, shame, on, shame on me. I, and, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the Holy Spirit thinks about someone blaspheming me. I don't know if... If you'll come back, I don't know. But I do know this. I do know this, that you don't need to make fun of it. Amen. You don't need to criticize those people down there that are rolling around in this, and I don't know whether they do or not, or what, what's running them down. I don't, I, I, hey, they may be a whole lot closer to the Holy Spirit than I am. I don't know. But the thing of it is, we don't need to laugh and make fun of them and criticize them because, listen, let them do their thing. And if it's if it's if it's pleasing to God, hey, we can all rejoice together when we get to heaven. But don't criticize their doings and don't criticize the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's that is this this right here. But now listen, he says uh, in uh, uh, thirty four, he says, "Old generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things?" For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Now notice here what he says. <clears throat> but I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Amen. Our word and judgment is, there's two judgments. And that our word, what he says in the dictionary about our word is, it's useless, it's vain, it's empty. And that sounds like Solomon's, what Solomon would say about vanity. Mm -hmm. It's all vexation of the spirit. It's all, it's all worthless. And he says here, but I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak and shall give an account, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. By, for by thy, by thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy word thou shalt be condemned. And so listen, do you hear there's two judgments here? And notice he says, by thy word thou shalt be justified. And by thy word, thou shalt be condemned. So we've got two judgments, but these idle words, these idle words that we're speaking are things that are going to, uh, uh, we're going to have to give an account for. Amen. We're going to have to give an account for. And uh, I, I, I've seen this word idle, you know, uh, the, the man went out to, uh, in the 11th hour to hire laborers. 
And he said, why stand ye here all day idle? Mm -hmm. And he said, no one's harvest. Nobody's offering a harvest. Well, the thing of it is, this idleness is, 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 is something that we don't need to partake of. Idleness is, is, is something that, that will uh, give the, the, uh, the devil a, a, a chance to work with us. Because, listen, idleness, and that goes with studying your word or, or going to church or anything that pertains to serving the Lord. If you're idle in it, then listen, you're giving the devil an opportunity to right. come in and to do his thing and to work on you. And bless your heart, he will work on you. He will work on you, and because this this idleness that we have, we don't need to have it. But the thing of it is, the devil can has can get entrance into that, and and then it's going to cause you more problems. And this will break up some of this idleness because listen, you sit there idle, and then you see what is brought to you, and you're going to come back to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me of those idleness because. Hey, and, and troubles on the way. So here, here's here's what I said. He says, But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. So it's it's something that we need to think about, people. These these and, and I you know, I I I I'll say, hey, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of idle words. Because listen, uh, so many times a lot of things that I say don't mean did this part. And uh, I, I, I shouldn't do it. But I want you to read, I want to read just a little bit more with, uh, uh, and if you want to just read that scripture there in, uh, in Matthew 20, you can about the, the, the vine, uh, about the, the workers. But in James, I want, to, I want you to look at something in James 3, 1. Of course, we know uh, a lot of James is writing and how it, how it is. But uh, in, in verse uh, 1 of chapter 3 of James, and he's speaking of the tongue. But uh, that's what we have to put a, a, a tab on. But my brother, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, listen to this, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Well, the Bible says that there's none perfect. And so, if a man, if a, it says, if a man is able to bridle that tongue, and by this I assume that man cannot control that tongue uh, like that he would if he's perfect. But anyway, he says, here's 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 the bridle. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the Lord uses those bits in our mouth to keep our, our tongues from flat. But he says that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm where, whithersoever the governor or the pilot listed. And so we see this morning that uh, even in verse 5, he says, Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little far kindleth. Mm -hmm. And this again gets us back to this thing of, of speaking things against the Holy Spirit, against our brothers and sisters, against our church, against God, and against mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ. And people, I, I cannot, for the life of me, understand any man or woman that can open their mouth and say these vile things that people say concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and God. I cannot, I, I, think, it, I think I'd fall over dead if I was to say something like that. Mm -hmm. But they do it. And listen, they don't know. They, they don't know what's at risk. They don't, they're, and, and, and I just don't believe that a person can utter those words and, and have the, the love of God in their heart. I just don't believe that because I know that the Holy Spirit, uh, He deals with people with that. And I, I just don't believe they can lay down and go to sleep overnight. I just don't believe that. So it's evident to me that that is a, a bad fruit. Uh, these these foul mouth people, uh, they just, they're, they're, it's just awful. Right. And uh, 
Uh, and I know, I know that uh, a sin is a sin, and I know that some of the things that I do and some of the things that I think, some of the things that I look at sometimes, is not uh, pleasing to God. And I try to ask forgiveness, I try to close my eyes, I try to shut my ears up, I try to make my mind quit thinking things that it thinks. But listen, uh, I willingly do not try, and I'm not trying to justify myself, but I willingly don't try to, to uh, uh, use things against God and, 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 and cause th that to happen because I know what I've had. I have the Holy Spirit within me. Be glad. And people, it sometimes He gets a hold of me and it takes days. It takes days for me to get settled on, on it and get forgiveness for it. And, and, and it's, not, it's not pleasing to, to the flesh to have uh, the Holy Spirit condemn it. But listen, He does. And, he, and, and so we need to think on, these, the, on these, some of these things that we're, that we're, that we're talking about. Now, notice in John's Gospel, I want to turn back over to John just a little bit and read some here in John's Gospel. Uh, John 14, I think we've got a scripture there that I want to read to you and make a comment too long. If I find it. John 14 is a good, a good uh, uh, of course, he starts off with let your heart be troubled, and that's comforting. But in John 14, 26, notice what he says here. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, Amen. whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you, Amen. my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And this morning, I think that if we could just really and truly grasp that and chew on it like a piece of hard meat and just keep on chewing and believing it, we'd be a whole lot happier people. We'd be a whole lot closer to the Lord and we would, we would understand more of the love of God. And then in, in the 15th chapter, looking in the 15th chapter in, in verse 26, 1526, yeah. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Now the Father has has said that, that he would send it to Jesus, and now Jesus has sent it. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Amen. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now what is that from the beginning? From eternity. I believe. He said from the beginning. So I believe that we were chosen in eternity. Amen. And I believe that, he, that we can bear witness that the Holy Spirit has dealt with our hearts. I believe this morning without, without a doubt in my mind that I know where the Holy Spirit uh, worked with me. Mm -hmm. I believe I know where I was saved. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have no other place in my, in my <coughs> mind that I can call back to and say, hey, that's where it was, because I know right where it was at. And I believe this morning that he takes me back there time and time and time again, because listen, Satan comes around and he says, hey, that's not right. You are not saved. And he is very bold. And he don't pull no punches. He says you're not saved. He, you wouldn't do things like that if you were saved. Well, I know where I'm saved. And the Holy Spirit will bear witness with it. Amen. And I, I, I want you to know this morning that I believe that I'm no different from anybody else. I'm just old human flesh and I'm no different. And I believe this morning that if you are saved, Everyone in here, the Holy Spirit will bear witness Amen. with your spirit where you were saved, when it happened, and what happened to you. And because I know what happened to me. 
And I believe that he will do that. And I don't believe after you listen to that Holy Spirit and what he has to say, I don't think you should reject it. But you listen to it. And you'll be a much better person. You'll be closer to the Lord. And you'll have a greater day. And you'll have a greater life. And you'll have a greater enjoyment. Because when the devil comes, he's come for to disturb you. And to keep you from doing something that will be a, a help to other people. And he said, well, you don't need to go down there and witness to them. Because they know you back when you was a, a little boy running around and how many. These are the things. But the thing of it is, the Holy Spirit comes to you and says, Hey, remember that time? <laughs> remember that time? Amen. Listen, people, <laughs> there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing no sweeter than that. Amen. So, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm through. Uh, uh, I've read all my scriptures that I, I wanted to read. Uh, and remember what I've said here about uh, the main thing is, is rejecting, rejecting or making fun of the Holy Spirit because there's nothing no worse. You can cut off your arm, you can cut off your leg, and, and then heal that. But listen, that thing will not, it just right. doesn't prosper, you know. So remember this this morning when you lay down on your bed at night or when you're out driving in the car or something like that and the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. And, and if you're saved, you're saved. And if you're not, and he's talking to you about it, you need to listen and you need to, if it takes pulling over the side of the road and having prayer, or if it means getting up out of your bed and going somewhere and getting your Bible and start reading and, and asking the Lord to, to show you, that's what you need to do. Because, hey, that's what you're put here for. Amen. That's to get ready to go. And the only way you can get ready to go is listen to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I thank y'all listen and for listening to what I have to say. Thank y'all very much. Amen. Yeah.